Okay, fantastic. So this is actually the second one of these that I'm doing. I'm really excited. We are obviously having this Educator Academy series, Educate the Educator. Um, and today what I'm going to be talking to you about is tailoring your teaching for individuals and how do we do that in the multi-level learner clinical teaching. And so uh, let me see here. We're going to be trying to individualize our teaching. We've talked about some of these things in the past. Some of this may be review for you, and I hope that everybody will take at least a little something away from today. So let's start with one-on-one -on -one teaching, because that's the most simple in some ways. Let's say you have a learner in clinic that's a med student, a, res a resident, a fellow, even an undergraduate. You want to set the stage for excellent teaching, excellent learning, so encourage them to come in a few minutes early or take a minute while your first patient is being roomed and set the stage for this good learning. So you want to set your expectations for the learner and both for yourself with the learner. And this is going to be important, right, for clinical workflow. You're already doing some of that. But what's the best way to learn from you? How does that work in, the, in your workflow? Next, develop shared learning goals. So I often say, what brings you to my clinic? What, what do you want to learn from me? How can I help you? And sometimes you get a blank look, and other times you'll have a very specific goal for why they're there. And that's going to really be widely different based on their level of learning and the background. Sometimes you'll get a med student that's not interested in neurology at all, but wants to be in here because they know it's important for their career in anesthesia. Um, so encourage the learner to develop their own goals with your guidance. Sometimes you'll get a blank look and they have no idea. So help them figure out what that they can learn from you in the time that you're going to share together. And that helps make that time and teaching more meaningful. Also, developing the skill of regular goal setting is really important for our ongoing learning and something for you to model for these learners. At the end or even before, consider providing tailored resources for learning. So this is an example that I've uh, been using for a lot of my learners. This comes from Sarah Schaefer out of Yale and is freely available brief modules for learning about movement disorder phenomenology. So for residents or even medical students and my um, new fellows, this is a great way to get people quickly up to speed. They can see phenomenology, which is really important in my field, and to get everybody, you know, just on the same page very quickly. The other thing you can do is consider giving one or maybe two articles that are specific to the learning that you did that day. I've tried to make that my practice, and, you know, at first it's hard to think about one more thing and getting an article together, but if you start to compile these articles in a centralized place for yourself, it becomes really easy. You start to identify really good articles or reviews as you're doing your own learning and reading. And so you can start to provide these for your learners. If you're seeing them again or you have a chance to follow up, this is a great time to say, okay, what did we learn? Are there questions that you had from the article or the patients? Let them know how the patients did. That can be one real big challenge for learners is they don't know how uh, what you did help the patient. And so that can be um, helpful to share and accelerate the learning that they have with you and with others. So you've done a great job with that. How do we take this to the group setting? Obviously, you know, you want to try to meet with each of your individual learners and do some of the same things, but it can be really difficult to get this done, say, when you're faced with a big diverse team. So say you come onto the wards and your team is a couple of medical students, some junior residents, an off-service resident, senior resident, and even fellow. We each of us have a type of learner that we tend to feel most comfortable with teaching. For me, that's residents and fellows, but we don't want to just focus on that one learner and leave the others um, out of focus as they are in this picture. Everybody has an opportunity to learn from you and from each other. So what I'd like to do then with our remaining time is think about a framework for how you would shift your teaching sort of live um, while you're having your week on consults or on service or in the clinic. How do you tailor your teaching for a group and to change that on the fly? So really one framework that I will sometimes use um, and I've heard discussed by others before is thinking about different times and different content and how you can either do the same time, same content, 
different times with different content, or even the same time with different content. And we'll talk about the value of each of those set, uh, settings. So let's start with same time, same content. This is going to be good for material that is new to everyone and learners who have a similar baseline. So if you just have residents that day, it's all your neurology crowd, um, maybe they've been you know, working for a few months now, so it's it's the late fall. Everybody's sort of up to speed with the basics, but you want to take them to a new level. So if learners have a similar baseline and it's fairly new material for them, this is a great uh, context to use the same time, same content. You can have a chalk talk or five minute speech sort of prepared in advance. And as we know, it's good to have these sort of in our back pocket. But because it's generalized information, it may be unrelated to the specific learning goals. You know, the Socratic method and what we've called pimping is out of vogue now, and we won't have time to get into that. So I've, I've featured the picture, um, the death of Socrates. And many people view the Socratic method as sort of a bad way of doing the same time, same content. And that's, you know, up for debate. Um, Happy to talk about it with you, but I think it can feel like I'm just as the as the attending spewing the same thing to learners instead of individualizing the content. And so um, obviously not that's not going to be the same for everybody, but how can you do it differently? What about different times and different content? So this is best for widely different backgrounds of learners. So if you've got a medical student and a fellow, it's going to be really hard to give the same five minute chalk talk to them and then both to be able to get something out of it. That said, you're able to highly specify your teaching to each individual's learning goals. By the same token, it can be time consuming. And if you're pulling out different learners from clinical workflow, it can be disruptive to that workflow. But there are definitely ways to do this and to make it work for you and to be time savvy. You can tailor teaching while staffing patients. So this is something we're already doing, right? But this, as you think about it, is a way to give different content at different times. So you're working with a senior resident who's presenting a patient. You're going to challenge them in a different way with your teaching than you would with a medical student. So think about how you can optimize that. Another way is, okay, at some point, the resident's going to have to write all those notes, put in those orders, follow up on things. That's a great time to do chalk talks with your one or two medical students to get that um, baseline information in for them. I think one of the most challenging things to think about doing would be the same time, different content, because how do we direct this information to all these different learners? and to help meet their individualized learning goal. This is helpful if you've got learners that are not too dissimilar, as we've talked about before. So if you've got all residents, um, this can be a way to give different content to say a junior resident for a senior resident, but you're not having to be all over the spectrum with your education. And this, you know, to, to take the Socratic method one step further is one way that this is viewed, right? I'm answering or I'm asking probing questions to the more junior learners. And when we get to a point where we're not, um, they don't understand the information, then we switch to the resident and go up the hierarchy in that way. But what can we do since this sort of pimping and Socratic method is uh, off the table for us? What are some tips that we can do for same time, different content? Start by thinking about asking open-ended questions. This encourages discussion and people can chime in from all learning levels so that you can find out where they are. And so this, this is one way to do the Socratic method, but in a way that's encouraging to the modern learners that we have today. So just like Coach K has had to change the way um, that he deals with his players, we have to change how we teach, right? We've got a new audience now for some of us. Try to avoid the what am I thinking questions. This is hard for all of us. We're tired. We're trying to teach, but try to avoid that and try to avoid absolute right and wrong answers. Um, this may reflect actually your individual style and practice rather than guidelines and can be confusing for learners as they work with different attendings who have a different style. It's really easy for me to do this, but to avoid saying, obvious, well, it, I do this, I make this mistake, I should say, 
Um, but avoid saying obviously or as you won't know, this can be really isolating for the junior learners or even some of the senior ones who, oops, I didn't get that information before. Try to be inclusive as you can. This is one way to really utilize your senior learners, right? You're standing there, you have a senior resident or a fellow, make them teach, right? <laughs> this is a way to, for them to uh, learn the information better for themselves, right? When we teach, we know the information and um, it helps them learn to teach. And then finally, think about the broader context of your teaching, whether you're doing knowledge-based learning, frameworks like what are the national recommendations or approach to learning and meta skills like how do I call a consult so this is if you're thinking about different skill sets that you can teach you can do this in a different content same time and I know we're running long but um, here's my contact if anybody has any questions uh, thank you Katie thank you we, we used to call it trickle down teaching haven't you heard that phrase I teach the chief, the chief teaches the residents, the residents teach the medical students. That's I think that's a great way to, to utilize your time. Yeah. All right. Oops. Nope, don't do that. 